So a brief introduction about myself. As I said, my name is Vera. I graduated in industrial engineering. I'm a partner of LUMO. LUMO is a small, we could call boutique consultancy on organizational development. We are five partners. And I have been working in this field for 22 years. And before that I worked, I was a partner at Pricewaterhouse. So I began from the technical to the human side, beginning with IT, re-engineering, and then it became very clear to me that the successes and failures of the change processes in organizations were much more connected to the human and the people side. So I changed place, and I'm especially grateful to be here because we can call Lumo one of the offsprings, Brazilian offsprings of the NPI in Holland. So we also work inspired in anthroposophy, but very focused in the, the business world. So going into the, the archetype I would like to, to share with you. Well, the, in the Bible, it says that the human being was created based on the image of God or the creator. And when we think of organizations, who created the organizations? We, human beings, we did it. So it's very probable that consciously or unconsciously, we have created the organizations at our image. So before jumping into organizations, I would like to briefly share an image of the human being, and then we go to the other side. So I think you have, you have a, a, we, can, we can go to a slide. And Catherine is also going to share with you the same image that we can go through together. So, is that okay? Do you have it? Very clear. Yeah. Yes. So yes. first, exploring in the left side, we can see a, a way to see the human being in four different dimensions. And each dimension is connected to one of the realms or one of the kingdoms of nature. So we have in the very bottom our physical body that is just matter and connected to, we could say, just the mineral kingdom. Above that, that is close, and sometimes it's difficult even to separate. We are talking about the vital body, where resides all our processes. That's, it's vital because it brings the life. So we are talking about the breathing, we are talking about the circulatory, the blood, and what makes us alive. And these two levels, the difference of being dead or just being uh, sleeping or even in coma. In the next level, it's what we share with the animals. So it comes the anemic body where our feelings, our, it's really the, I would say the stage uh, as a theater of our emotions, where we have the sympathies, the antipathies, that really comes what the, the beginning of the human side, but that we still share with the animals. And at the upper level, then we come to the eye, something that really makes us human beings unique. And what makes us unique? Well, we can talk about not intelligence because the animals have it also. We can talk about the rationality, but most of all of consciousness. We can think about our acts and change behavior and change beliefs. We are talking about vision. We are talking about values. The human being is the only one being able to be driven by a, a vision that he or she has created, but guided by the values that we have. So it's, if we see in the chart, it's a kind of, of hierarchy, but all the levels are complementary and they all influence each other. But having this image, we can go to the right side and see how we can match that or can mirror that in an organization. Uh, going from the bottom to the top, 
we can begin with the resources. That is just the physical body of the organization. So everything that we can count, that we can measure physically. So we are talking about money, we are talking about all the equipment, the assets, we are talking about, for instance, the, the layout. So it's everything that is tangible. Every time we go up in a different level, the levels become more subtle. So we, if we go into the process and we see on the left, it's what brings life to the organization. And life means, well, everything that works inside. So we are talking about not just the processes, but the project, the, the, the how do you say, the products, the services, all the flows of information that we have, the flows of materials, all the services and systems. And we can measure, but it's not physical anymore. We have to relate because here it's not just space, but comes the dimension of time. It's not just how much I produce, but how much I produce and how much time. And then if we go to the next level, but in fact, in these two levels, if I pick up different organizations of companies of the same industry, in fact, of the same size or capacity of investment, they are very similar. What really begins to make difference from one organization to the other are the upper levels. And then we come to the, the blue one, the relationships. It's where the emotions come. And the, really, the, how do we say, the expression of how human beings relate inside a company. Then we have communications. We have all the conflicts, the roles that not necessarily are in the charts that are in the process, but all the power relations are there. And not just the internal relationships that we can check in the engagement surveys or even in the climate surveys, but also the relationship with suppliers, with clients and partners and all kinds of relationships that we have around. And finally, uh, we have the identity. What is really, uh, what we would say the rising star that really makes us as an organization unique. And in fact, are the same factors that we see in the human side. We will talk about biography. We are talking about <coughs> the vision of the organization. We are talking about the values and about the culture. If we, are, we said about climate or engagement in the relationships, here identity, we are in a different level. We are talking about culture. And it's so, and of course, the more we go up, it's more intangible. For instance, I went to a pharmaceutical company once. I was waiting in the reception and then there was this beautiful charts about vision, values, and, and mission on the, on the wall. And then I asked, it was just me and the receptionist, I asked her, well, that's wonderful. What really holds, sustain the vision and values of the company, of the chart? And she says, well, just the nail that hangs the picture. She said, no, I don't speak English. She said, I don't speak English. I don't hear anybody talking about it, and then as consultants and also working banks and visiting clients, how many times we go around and we see identities just hanging on the wall, but that don't go through the heart, that don't really go through the minds and how people, of course, act. And, but why I'm so passionate about this model? First. Uh, we use a lot as a tool for diagnosis to help leaders to diagnose the entire company or even the areas. We can look at where are the problems. What are the nature of the problems that we have? It's a matter of resources. It's a matter of process. It's a matter of relationship and identity. Even just separating helps a lot to make it clear. On the other hand, there is one invisible law behind. If a problem is one level, normally the cause 
and the solution is in a level uh, up. For instance, I don't uh, fix or arrange a new layout just taking furniture from one side to the other. When I review the layout, it has to serve the processes or the culture that I want to implement. For instance, I want the leaders to be close to, to their teams or I want to enforce the integration of the leaders among them. That will reflect in the layout. Which areas I want to be close to each other, then I have to solve in terms of processes. If we see in, in many, most of the companies, processes that don't work, information that just disappears from one area to the other, most of the time people come and implement a ERP, a SAP, and then everybody has the experience that it didn't work. Why? Because it's not sufficient. We have to look at the relationship side. What is the level of trust? What is the level of communication? If I have, for instance, in all, you know, you know in all the engagement surveys or climate surveys, communication is normally the first point to be addressed. And we can solve it just looking at the process. Well, let's implement an internet, an intranet, or people are lacking eye-to-eye -eye contact. People are lacking confidence. So it's about also seeing the nature of the, the problem and address. And if there is a lot of conflict and lack of confidence, we have to look at the identity. What kind of messages are coming from the top? How clear is our culture? If we are in a change process, what do we have or do we want to intensify, to respect and honor the past? But what are the new values that we have to look for based on a new vision. And it's about letting things behind and struggling for the other things, but connected to the other levels. And what is more important is that, it's also another invisible law, is that in the lower levels, how do we measure and how do we address issues? In the lower levels, we have, they are quantitative issues and we address with projects, beginning or with a beginning, a middle and an end, and KPIs and so on. So it's about technique. But if our problem holds in the relationship and identity, it's a qualitative issue. And it's not the time of the clock, it's the time of the heart. So we have to work with processes. We, there is a beginning and there is no end. How much time does it take for a team to become a team? Give them money and in three months, a big bonus and they will become a team. No, it's about developing trust. It's about not technique, but art. The art of leadership, the art of engagement, the art of negotiation. And how open we are to address those issues and really, for instance, bring and face the, how the values are working and so on. And would like to open for questions or yeah. how we use anything you want. When we use schemes, uh, they are frozen, but we are talking about an organic being. So these issues of technique and art, they mix. The question is, what do I use to address the issues? When I said technique, it's more connected to projects, and okay, you can have a technical process, but when we talk about art, it has to do with development, transformation, and our quality is very connected to the human side. And when I say it's the time of the heart, how much time does it take to engage someone and, and to, uh, to develop a culture? And it has to do, how do I sensibilize the individuals to them be able to work in the group? And mm -hmm. then I'm talking about all the intangible 
arts that we can see? What's the technique of leadership? What's the art of leadership that also comes from the heart and inspire? It's difficult to inspire when you are just talking about technique. And, and that's why it's very important to have this self-connection with, and that we will talk just now uh, in a brief. How is my connection with the organization and how can I develop for self-development and also at service this art? As I said briefly, I worked for, uh, at the beginning when I moved to LUMO, I worked a lot with uh, implementations of uh, SAP and, and, you know, all these integrated processes. And in many clients, this was a shock. That's why they afterwards uh, hired change management, because it didn't work. Even if they had all the best system, people didn't have all the information they needed. Why? Because there was not a real understanding and a real work on the relationship side. In terms, if information is power, Nobody will do the input on the process. If the roles and responsibilities, if people are afraid of losing their areas or losing their jobs and not understanding the change, they will never make the process work. So that's one, one dimension. And in others, we came into team buildings, for instance, or even cultural change, and there were a lot of conflicts in the relationship side. Oh, let's solve the conflicts. Yes, but we have to look into the identity and the biography of the company and the kind of culture. If there was a culture that incentivated the conflict. So it was not just about communication and doing team buildings. If in the culture, in the processes, there was a, a hidden belief that conflicts could bring efficiency, for instance. So it's always, how do we look behind and what is just there? Sure. And, and I think I will now complete the, the image, bringing this connection between the human being and the organization and closing with this image of the, what is the role of leader in that? If we look on both sides, uh, this human being connects, can have different types of connection with the organization he or she works. I can have, for instance, just a connection in the resources part. I can have a security, I call it security bridge. That is the part, what are the bridges between the individual and the organization. So I'm, I'm working here just for my wage. I'm working here for the benefits because it has very good physical conditions. And, and that's okay because I can work five hours or nine hours or eight hours and then really realize, have self-fulfillment singing on the, on, at night. That's okay. But that's the first level of bridge. I can have a second level, and in fact, they add on, that is connected to process. Is that what we call the dedication bridge? I love what I do. I love to work in IT and HR, you know, in the investment side. And I can work over hours. I can study a lot. But it doesn't depend if I'm working in Triodos, in Coca-Cola, in Greenpeace. If I have opportunity to develop myself professionally and, and be a better profession and, and work with my passion. But all these bridges, they add on. And I love what I do, but I don't pay my bills at the end of the month. So something will have to change there too. And then I can have another bridge, upper bridge, that is connected to relationship. I love to work here. I love the people, I feel rec recognized, I like the climate, I feel well. 
The point is, if there's just this, becomes a social club, or if the leader leaves, the whole group leaves too, here I'm financial director, in the other startup I will be operations, but what matters is to be together. I love to be here, but I do a lousy job where I don't earn enough. Of course, all those things we will need a balance. And the biggest bridge we could desire as a leader or as an organization would be the, the bridge of identification, where it's not about I like to be here, but I'm proud of it. My values, it's where you said, where my values, I can see them connected to the values of this organization. I want to be part of that story. Of course, there are ups and downs, as there, are, there is in the individual. But there is this bigger identification. That can be a good identification, a healthy one, or a dependent one. If my identification with the company, the company becomes bigger than me, oh, they know what's better for my career, they know what's better for me, then it's also unbalanced. So what we... What is important as a leader is that the bridge that each individual connects or builds with the companies, it's free will. But as a leader, I can create conditions for people to create bridges. If I care about the physical conditions, if, uh, you know, re, uh, balanced salaries and so on, I'm creating, helping people create uh, bridge of security. If I work on the personal, the professional development, give opportunities, people can have dedication, and so on. If I'm motivated and I address the conflicts, I work in engaging people, and it doesn't matter if I have budget or not to do it, I'm working on the motivation. And I, if I engage people to participate in the culture, that means also not just to build, but how do we implement to make coherence between the processes and the other levels and the identity. I'm helping people create this identification. But the last trick is that it's very difficult as a leader to create conditions and help people to build bridges that I don't have. So it comes again to the I. I have to work and have the self-reflection and also development to look at my bridges and, and of course they are not, they are imbalanced all the time depending on my phase of life and my situation and so on, but really in strengthening them to help create this opportunity for people, mainly if we are in a change process. That helps very much. It was a real pleasure. One of the founders of the Impulse in Brazil of the consultancy was Lex Boss. So we have there in the very beginning some kind of roots together. So thank you very much. See you there. Thank you.